Yes, Connor, uh, word is yours. We are uh, still uh, on time. Uh, so uh, feel free to share with us how you think we can use Moodle and then connect in the best possible way. Thank you, Thomas. Um, as I said previously, so I'm the VLE operations manager at uh, Software Solutions, and there's just a couple of emails back there uh, just to, uh, if there are any questions that um, couldn't be answered uh, in the Q&A at the end, um, then you've got our emails there that um, you can contact us on if necessary. So um, purpose of this presentation, um, so my five top tips on how to use Moodle with mConnect efficiently. Next slide, please, Thomas. So the first tip um, I would say is use a mConnect supported version of Moodle. So as you can see in the image just below the title there, um, those are the latest supported versions of Moodle and their end of life dates. Um, you might notice that um, if you are on Moodle 3.8 or 3.5 that those aren't included there. Uh, that's because uh, Moodle 3.8 and 3.5 are both end of life as of next month. So for the purpose of this presentation, I haven't included them there. Um, so it would be 3.9 and onwards is um, the latest versions of Moodle and 3.9 uh, is the long-term security, um, which means essentially it'll be supported for a lot longer than the next couple of uh, versions that are released. So keeping an up-to-date uh, version of Moodle is just important to uh, maintain the security and keep your Moodle safe for all the users. And then as some added security as well, we also perform a Nessus scan on our servers, which is essentially a um, in-depth, minimally invasive uh, scan that just covers some extra little security um, exploits that are away from Moodle. So um, that's just a nice little additional extra. So to go into the um, latest Moodle versions um, to start, so Moodle 3.9, as I say, that's the lo latest long-term security release. Uh, what that means is um, that I think it'll be supported until May 2023, whereas Moodle 3.10 will only be supported until May 2022. Um, so it just means that security-wise, um, patches and bug fixes, um, security exploit fixes, all of those will be supported until that date. Um, so if you are looking to stay on a version of Moodle for a long time rather than switching every year, um, a long term security release is definitely the one for you. And Moodle 3.10, um, obviously it's not supported for as long as Moodle 3.9, but it does have more features. So the good thing about Moodle 3.10 is that it's got all of the features that Moodle 3.9 has to offer. And then it's got some additional extras as well, which you can see in the pictures um, below there. All of those um, additional features can be found on Moodle's release notes for those versions. Thank you. And on to the next slide, please. OK, so the second tip is to use an up to date theme and course format. So as you can see uh, down below the title there, I've included a picture of um, our development Moodle um, within Microsoft Teams. So that as uh, Thomas demonstrated earlier, that's what our demonstration Moodle looks like with the um, collaboration of Move, Theme and Edwise, of course, format, as you can see to the, the right hand side there. So th with those combined, that is what the end result is. So just to go into um, them in a bit more detail, so the Move theme it's got, so it's got a nice responsive design with some nice uh, transitions on the drop downs. Uh, so that makes the site visually appealing uh, with the addition of uh, those four marketing tiles that you can see in the second picture below. Um, and those are able to be customized so that you can tailor them to make it more suited to your Moodle. Um, it also has accessibility features. So if you look on the larger image down the uh, bottom left, you'll see that little orange icon down the bottom left. Um, that's an additional feature that allows um, people to change options for to cater for color blindness, font sizes, and a lot more just to make the site more friendly to um, people that may need it. And then the theme is also fully mobile responsive. 
So no matter the size of your screen, if it's a laptop, if it's a mobile phone, if it's a tablet, the site will always look well presented um, and it will always respond in a nice way, uh, as some themes may not do. And with the Edwiser course format, so um, people familiar with the grid format, uh, as previously um, known, um, it's a lot like that, but it also adds an overview to um, each of the courses and the course as a whole. So if you can look on the um, image down the bottom left, you'll see just near the top, that is the course overview. So what that will do is it'll show the student or any users that are using the course the entire activity and resources that are included within the course. It also has a nice resume button. So where the course was left off last time, if you were to click resume, it would take you to where you left off. And then each of the course topics down the bottom, as you can see on the image, um, also have their own little overview, um, which then allows. So if you are looking for a specific assignment, a specific quiz, you can jump right there without having to um, sift through all the content. Um, and a nice additional feature to this as well is that all of those um, course topic tiles and the course overview also have a progress bar on each of them. So you can see which course topics that you've um, that you've completed without having to access them again. Thank you, Thomas. So this is uh, largely been covered by um, Thomas's presentation, but um, as an overview, so integrating Moodle with Teams is essentially a no brainer. You can have the vast resources that Moodle has to offer with utilizing the um, collaborative aspects of Microsoft Teams at the same time. So it essentially becomes a super VLE at that point. You've got you've got all of those combined together and the users will have a much more friendly experience um, with their online learning. Um, so something to note on the left hand side, there's got some key terminology that I might be speaking about on the right hand side. Uh, it's just to give a bit of an extra explanation as to what I'm talking about. Um, so content security policies, so that was known as the CSP, um, they tell your web browsers or the web server um, that Microsoft can be trusted. So it gives the green light to them. And then this then allows Moodle to be shown in Teams without an issue. So that's what would be covered in the, um, the installation, the setup of Schooler app. Um, and something else to note is that the CSPs can also be utilized to cater for other authentication methods, such as Shibleth or many more. Uh, that's just one of the ones that we've had success with in the past. Um, and as um, Thomas presented in his when uh, he was authenticating via the mConnect button on the left hand side. Thank you, Thomas. So the Microsoft 365 suite uh, plugins. So many of you will already know, uh, but Microsoft 365 already heavily relies on Azure Active Directory. So this is where essentially your users are stored uh, for their logins or enrollments. Um, so that's sort of like a requirement for the integration of having an Azure Active Directory for the Microsoft Suite plugins. Um, the plugin set uh, for Moodle allows the link of this Azure Active Directory to grant seamless access to the Office 365 features. So such as your Outlook, uh, Microsoft Teams, OneDrive and many more of the um, Office 365 features. Um, and so just an overview of what this plugin set uh, includes. So. The first one would be a block. So what that does is it shows your Azure profile. It also has um, the links to all of those other features that you can seamlessly sign into from Moodle. So as you can see, those little buttons down the bottom right, those are the sort of buttons you'd be looking for, for your Outlook, for your Teams. Just clicking those in the block will take you straight there through from Moodle. Uh, there's an authentication method, which um, is the sign in that um, Thomas demoed a bit earlier when he was logging into Moodle. Uh, there's also a repository uh, that you can use uh, if you've got files within OneDrive, for example, then you could 
use those as a assignment upload um, just as an example there. Um, there's also a filter which uh, converts links to say videos. If you were to put a link of a video, it automatically converts it into a HTML, um, so, sort of like a browser window for a video. So you would see the video rather than the link just there. And there's also a local plugin which ties them all together. Uh, it's got all the configuration, all the settings that will um, allow all of them to work together as a unit. And that's it for this slide. Thank you, Thomas. And then lastly, and a very important to note, is that Microsoft 365 authentication isn't required to use mConnect. So as I spoke about earlier, um, it's going to be uh, very good news for many because changing authentication methods can be very stressful um, between academic years. Um, so just with the use of a content security policy, as I recently mentioned, you're able to integrate methods such as um, Shibleth and many other ones just via a, some simple lines of code just to allow Moodle uh, to be shown in Teams and then also allow that authentication method to be um, given the green light through Microsoft Teams as well. Um, and as I say, we've had success with uh, many other methods on that point as well. And that should be it for this slide. Thank you, Thomas. Perfect, and perfect. Yeah, just want to take us into the final wrap up of today's uh, webinar. So first I want to bring the word back to you, Connor. You've been able to give uh, the attendees uh, today uh, a freebie. Uh, we thank you a lot for that and uh, feel free to explain uh, what you're able to offer today. Yes, so um, for being part of this webinar, we're offering early access to our Moodle Health Check service uh, that we've enabled on our website, as you can see the link to it there. So on complete, on successful completion of this health check, we're also offering a free security vulnerability scan. So you can see it's called a Nessus vulnerability scan um, that we use on our side, as I say, uh, I said a bit earlier that we do on all of our servers as an additional security measure. So it's another free um, Nessus vulnerability scan. Um, and yeah, so to, uh, the link there uh, will take you to a page where you've got to go down and um, you can find a way out to retrieve some information that we may need with this health check. And the button at the, button at the bottom of that page allows you to um, schedule in your meeting time slot um, with myself and then we can uh, go through on a meeting to um, evaluate the health of your Moodle. Is there any reason why not everyone on this webinar should do the health check? No, definitely not. Um, I mean, there's, there's no harm to check on uh, the health of your Moodle. Um, if there's anything out of date, if there are any exploits, this will be highlighted within these um, within these health checks as well, and it will come through in a nice little um, infographic as well to tell you what exploits are there. Yeah. So personal he personal health, Moodle health, health is good for everyone. 